Can you offer a shred of evidence that more than 2 million people died from converting to clean energy? This is the Trump playbook here. Will the real Slim Shady please stand up? <laughs> it's not his fault that you represent everything he hates. It's not his fault that you sold out for money. Okay, so Vivek is back again, for some reason taking another MSNBC interview to be humiliated, though this time it's with the much less aggressive Andrea Mitchell. Unfortunately, Vivek has all but mastered the talking around the points game that he's known for, and if you're not going to come at him like Hassan did, then you're not really going to be able to back him in a corner how he did. So I wanted to watch some of these clips and offer a little bit of pushback as Andrea did a good job job making him look uninformed but didn't really push back the way that I like so we'll start with climate change you've called climate change and that agenda a hoax you said more people are dying from bad climate change policies than there are of actual climate change but according to a UN agency extreme weather events compounded by climate change caused the death of two million people between 1970 and 2021 can you offer a shred of evidence that more than two million people died from converting to clean energy I can offer clear evidence that the number of climate disaster related deaths is down by 98 percent over the last century. The number of people who died of hurricanes, tornadoes, heat waves and other weather related events in 1920 for every 100 that died then to die today. Hey, we also have better housing structures to withstand natural disasters. Tornado and hurricane sirens weren't invented until the 70s. So, of course, people are dying at a smaller rate. We've got more efficient responses to the emergencies. It doesn't fix the problem, though. This is reactive, not proactive. Let's let's try to move forward here, you know. And for the Vivek stands that I know are coming, Tornado and hurricane sirens can and are already powered through solar and other green energy methods. They are not relying on fossil fuels at all, any bit. The, the, the facts that Vivek is saying doesn't change the fact that 2 million people have still died as a direct result of climate change. 2 million too many, might I add, and it's only projected to get worse and worse and worse if we're going to continue to be reactive instead of proactive. Look at how many hurricanes and just natural disasters that we've had recently. How many people are quoting that they're worse than anything they've ever seen, far worse than past ones that they've seen, the people who have been living in those areas their entire lives, along with the warming climate, uh, right? rising sea levels, warming sea levels, it's really telling that he couldn't provide a single shred of evidence of how any climate change policies are causing deaths because they aren't. And instead he tries to cherry pick a stat that doesn't really mean anything just to obfuscate from the point and instead of just conceding or admitting where he was wrong, he would rather do the coward thing and just beat around the bush. I don't know. Let's jump to the foreign policy stuff, but we won't stay long because I've covered it as complete nonsense like three times now. You said two weeks ago you're in favor of freezing the current line of control, letting Russia keep the Donbass region as long as Ukraine would give up all attempts to enter NATO. That's Vladimir Putin's basic demand. There's evidence of thousands of Ukrainian children being kidnapped from those areas of Russian control. Murders, atrocities in that area. Isn't that just letting Putin win despite his war crimes? Andrew, you, you conveniently left out the most important part of the deal, which is what the United States wins out of it. That would only be conditioned on Vladimir Putin exiting his military alliance with China. The Russia-China military that alliance would be, is the me, single greatest me. threat that the United States faces today. Excuse me, that would be conditioned, you said, on Russia containing control of the land he has grabbed. So... China is a whole other question. Yes. Let's move on. So there's to, a deal. Let's move no, no, on it's, to not, China. It's, it's, it's not, Andrea, Andrea, but one second. This wait, is really important me, to no, understand. Me, I proposed a deal. Up. There are two sides to the deal. Exit the military partnership with China. That's a crucial part of the deal that I would do. I will add, Andrea does do a good job pointing out that what he's saying he would do is literally just giving Putin exactly what his intentions were when he invaded from the start. He is directly just reinforcing his behavior. All the while, Ukraine is our last line of defense from Putin going into Poland, something he has verbalized his want to do. And Ukraine 
Spain is not America. This is something that we should remember. If Vivek is not only going to tell Ukraine, we're not going to help you anymore. You're fucked. Oh, and by the way, uh, there's no chance you're getting in NATO. So you're never going to be uh, one of our allies. Why would they then just agree to give up their own land solely to push forward Vivek and America's agenda. Why would they do that? It doesn't make any sense. And you can notice how he never lays out any actual, tangible, concrete strategy. This is the Trump playbook here. Just confidently say things you know that you'll never do, no matter how outrageous, and hope that your bravado sells it to your fans. This is how, like Trump said, he would bring peace to the Middle East. Never happened. So it didn't make any progress on that. Or how he said he could get Putin and Zelensky in the same room and just tell him to settle and and it would be over in 24 hours. And we all know that that is absolute bullshit. Well, I'm sure there's some Trump fans who believe that. But the sane ones of us know that that is absolute bullshit. Foreign policy is a lot more nuanced than getting two people in a room and, and drinking a couple beers with the bros. I don't know if you don't understand that. I don't know what else to tell you. They do go into Israel a little bit, which is huge in terms of our intelligence, in terms of uh, the, the front line of defense against Iran for, ad, uh, for advancing democracy in that region, uh, which is something Vivek also wants to abandon, by the way. They also touch on Taiwan. But again, you can jump over to my last two or three videos about Vivek if you want to see me debunking his foreign policy nonsense, nonsense at length. Uh, we're just beating a dead horse now, though, so I'm going to move forward. The last clip I want to play is a funnier one, uh, straight up just comical. But if you didn't know, <laughs> Eminem sent Vivek a cease and desist to to stop using his songs on the campaign trail. So let's see what Vivek had to say about that one. About Eminem, they've sent you a cease and desist through the music licensing company to stop using Lose Yourself on the Trail. Have yes. you agreed to move on? Yeah, look, I think that uh, I'll, I'll respect his wishes, but I would just say, will the real Slim Shady please stand up? <laughs> Eminem in his rise used to be a guy who actually stood up to the establishment and said the things that the establishment didn't want him to say. I think the fact that my political viewpoints may differ from his, I think people change over the course of their lives. But I have hope for him that he will one day re rediscover the renegade. I hope he sends him another one just for saying, will the real Slim Shady please stand up? <laughs> That's just me. I don't know. You can tell that he's trying to like bottle up those emotions he's feeling, but He's like a kid whose best friend told him he doesn't want to play anymore. Like, sorry, Vivek, you're exactly the kind of rich establishment nerd that Eminem has always been against. It's not his fault that you represent everything he hates. It's not his fault that you sold out for money. And if anything, he did you a favor because you weren't relating with my generation when you did that. We were all just laughing at how cringe you look. If you enjoyed this video, we're a social society. We're a commentary channel influenced by society, politics, and the economy. We also get a touch bit philosophical at times and like to talk about the psychology of things. We're pretty left-leaning on this channel, but we are open to our right-wingers as well. The biggest thing here is having conversations that get everyone to the bottom of the truth. If that sounds like something that can interest you, smash that subscribe button. What are you doing? Leave us a like on this video or even comment because the only way we become a society is together. Peace.